So if you take a look at China, we seem to, I don't know if you characterise this as a breather, as a chance to kind of reassess, or whether investors are waiting for a fresh catalyst, be it another move from the PBOC, be it more policy action from the government, or a meaningful recovery in property. What do you think is going to be the next driver if we're going to see further upside for Chinese equities? I think we need taking a pause right now because we have seen, obviously, as you said, a very fast and furious reaction to the Chinese equity market post November of last year and continuing into so far this year. I think taking a step back, the biggest change that we observed in the last three months has been a very sharp pivot back to supporting growth by the Chinese uh, regulators and authorities. Number one, they basically took off uh, zero COVID and also they also rolled back their previous uh, measures on the property market over two self-inflicted policy controls and that's been completely released right now but at the same time uh, during this period in time we have also seen a very very sharp rally we can also call it like a bull market in almost all, in all the major indices tracking the chinese equities so we have basically gone from a point where valuations are very depressed to a point where valuations are now kind of, I wouldn't say fair value, but investors are now taking a pause and say, okay, we need to basically see some uh, improvements on the fundamentals, be it revenue growth or be it earnings guidance from here to basically push it to another next level up, I think. I think the initial phase of catching up um, and unwinding some of the overbearishness that we saw in October of last year is largely done at this point. We've also seen an eventful start to the year when it comes to emerging markets. It was so much optimism and then, of course, a, a little bit of reconsideration depending on the direction of the Fed, the direction of the US dollar and the direction or, or the path of the China reopening. What do you like across EMs at the moment? Korea is obviously a top performer. Do you think there's further upside there? Um, I think right now where we like in terms of sectors, we like communication services, uh, industrial and financial still within the Asia uh, context. And part of it is that we still believe that the earnings drivers or outlook for some of these sectors are going to be pretty decent going into the rest of this year. Obviously, we are going to be hearing from the companies uh, in the coming weeks as they announce their year-end and results and basically give forward guidance in the future. I think what is happening right now is that we are all tracking very closely the reopening statistics. Obviously, we will not get any of the um, official numbers until probably about March because they're combining the first two months, even the Lunar New Year. But the indicative factors right now that we are seeing on the mobility side is pretty good. We're seeing that uh, hotel bookings uh, in domestic China has now recovered above pre-pandemic level of 2019. We've also seen mobility data in terms of the malls and obviously uh, in the Macau being a lot better than expected. Um, in Korea, I think the bounce back we have seen so far has been uh, quite good. It's also probably a lot of it is focused on the tech sector where we have seen uh, results from the tech giants like Samsung and SK Hynix. But also at the same point in time, we are also seeing that the stock prices are no longer reacting to poor earnings in terms of like a losses that's been reported. You see it's still pretty strong mm. price reaction as people think that the inventory cycle is more or less done. Yeah, that concentration in tech stocks, especially semiconductors, was something that really worried the investors. And now we also heard from Goldman Sachs earlier today that Korea is no longer a micro play, it's a macro play. Uh, are those also the sectors that you're going after at this point, or has the rally uh, already been priced in? We are still positioned in those uh, stocks right now because we find them to be probably the best position to ride out this inventory cycle. Don't get me wrong, I, I'm not saying that the inventory cycle is done, but we are now at a point in time where the inventory levels are pretty close to historical highs and the risk reward of basically a further um, spike up in the inventories is probably unlikely. It could happen, but it's unlikely. So that's where we are positioned somewhat right now.